Three U.S. states deprive convicted felons of the right to vote for the rest of their lives. One of those is Florida. And there are 1.7 estimated million people there who are disenfranchised due to a prior felony conviction. Florida has been decided by fewer than 200,000 votes in three of the past five presidential races. So it's a meaningful number. Could these lost votes be having a big effect on the outcome of presidential elections? Joining us now, two men who served their time. They say they should be able to vote again. If they succeed, could votes like theirs swing the 2020 election? Joining us now, Desmond Mead and Neil Voltz, both of them with felony convictions, both campaigning to return the franchise to Florida felons. It's great to see you both. Uh, and, and I got to say, I, I have mixed feelings on this topic, but the, Desmond, the, the question that always comes immediately to mind with restoring the vote to felons is, America as a country does not trust you to carry a gun. So why would we trust you to choose the next president? Well, good, first of all, good evening, Tucker. Thank, us, thank you for having us on the show. Of course. You know, and we're real excited about what's going on in Florida because it's a group of ordinary American citizens from all walks of life, from all political persuasions, that believe in second chances, that believe in having a more inclusive democracy, that believes in, in just fairness. You know, and, and you, when you talk about America, you know, I'm reminded of George Bush, George W. Bush, when he said that America is a nation of second chances. And mm -hmm. that when that door of prison opened, that we, society, should do everything it can to help facilitate a successful reentry because it's into, into society's best interest. It helps increase public safety, it increases contributors to the tax base, and it's all about fairness. This is a country oh, of second okay. chances. Okay, and I'm totally for second chances, and that's why, as I said, I have mixed feelings on this, because I believe in redemption, and I, and I mean that. But you didn't answer the question, which is, if we don't trust you to have a firearm, or to serve on a jury, or to serve in the military, or to serve as a teacher, why would we trust you enough to make a decision as profound as who the next president is going to be? Well, l let me take a crack at that, Tucker, and thanks a lot Thank for having you. us on. Um, we don't really have an opinion on that, but what I'd like to why? tell you is that according to the Florida Parole Commission, people who are people involved are three times less likely to reoffend if they've had their voting rights restored. We think that's yeah. a huge deal. Why is that? It's a huge deal because one. It proves that voter restoration helps stop the cycle of crime, which means we can have safer communities in Florida. It also shows that the individual who's trying to grasp that second chance, something we're familiar with, that that allows people a better opportunity to restore their families, to oh. re-engage with their communities, get jobs. And we think that's a win-win worth focusing on, and that's what we're focused on right now, because we well, think, think this will great. make for a better Florida. Uh, I think that's, that's great, but it doesn't prove it, by the way. It's suggested, but I'm willing to believe it. But you, you're not answering the core question, which is this is not just about the felons. It's about the other 325 million people who live in this country who want the best possible government they can get. And I find it a little odd that the Democratic Party pushes so hard for enfranchisement for felons without ever answering the obvious question, which is will it get us wiser, more capable political leadership? Well, Tucker, here's the deal. When you talk about uh, uh, people that are pushing this, what I see is, is that when Charlie Crist was governor of Florida and over 155,000 people were able to have their rights restored, he was a Republican at the time. When I seen right. the first changes in Virginia, the governor and the attorney general was Republican. And yeah. the biggest proponent for this is Senator Rand Paul, who has been a champion for this cause for quite a number of years. And, and I so I don't... I'll ask him the same question then. I mean, can you reassure me? Because this affects my life too. I'm going to have to live under the president that you choose. Well, and, and so, let me, will this I, make it can, more likely that we get better politicians? I mean, that's that's a fair question, I think. Well, and is it, that is the goal, right? We want to have a better society. And so, for us, we look at those nearly two million people, those two million voters, and we're reminded that those are two million people, those are two million families, those are two million, you know, stories. If you're a person of faith like me, those are two million sons and daughters of God, people with potential. And that potential right now, Tucker, is sitting on the sideline in far too many instances. And we but want to help say, those people Neil, get back look, on to the game so that they can then help make us a better Florida. You're making me less sympathetic to your case, which I'm, I'm sympathetic to. I want to see, I, I had lunch the other day with a felon who's a good friend of mine. I, be, I want them back in society. But I also just wonder why you care more about voting than you do about your ability, again, to serve in the military or to serve on a jury or to be a teacher or a cop or a fireman. All of these are barred to you. 
So if we're going to restore felons to full citizenship, why is it just voting that we're focused on? Why can't so, they go hunting Tucker, with me or teach Tucker, my kids? In the, state, in, the state, in the state of Florida, they have what they call a single subject rule. You could only deal with one thing at a time. And so when you look at the state of Florida and where a person could lose the right to vote for uh, releasing healing field balloons in the air, disturbing turtle nesting eggs, burning a tire in public, or even driving on a suspended license. And then <laughs> once that person loses their rights, they have to wait five or seven years now after I get they it. have completed their sentence. But it's more than that, Tucker, because after they wait that five and seven years, what we see here in Florida is that there's an additional 10-year waiting okay. period. And so we're talking about Look, making an American citizen wait over 17 years just to have a chance and a lot of those Trust citizens me, are I'm veterans who have put their lives okay. on the line for this country okay. fighting in Iraq and but then they come back then they I might get, get in a bar fight We're and you're going to say I, they can't vote no but I want to say they should be able to be cops and soldiers and jury foremen also and let's just make it bigger than just voting they should be able to go to the shooting range with you we're out of time gentlemen thank you for joining us well thank, thank you, you for we appreciate it